Hi, I'm David Horwich, leader of the Growth Planning and Strategic Advisory Practice at GHJ in Los Angeles. Drawing on my 23 years of investment banking transactional experience and 10 years of advisory experience, I advise business owners on the next steps to grow or exit their companies. As the U.S. has now entered into the technical definition of a recession, we are advising owners on steps to take to best position for an economic downturn. We urge clients to review the most recent prior downturn during the pandemic shutdowns as a guide to reviewing what could happen now. Some questions we're asking, did an entire cohort of customers disappear? Are you selling a staple or are, is it a discretionary product or service? Did you experience material shortages? The recession will impact every business differently and this recession will be different from the shutdowns and will be different for every business. Here's an action plan. Take a few hours away from your business and think about the likely impact of a downturn in sales to operations. Are any lines of business products or services particularly at risk during a downturn? Are there low margin lines that consume working capital that could easily be discontinued? As you consider that impact, how will that then impact appropriate levels of labor, capital, and other inputs? For a practical sense, we advise clients to do the following four activities to be proactive instead of reacting to events. First, create a robust forecast and run scenarios to test both assumptions and input swings. Do you have a business forecast? Do you have a 2022 budget? If you do, how is it constructed? Do you use unit volume and pricing assumptions or do you use some other methodology? Does your business forecast provide you with forward-looking information that you can use to adjust your business? What types of signals have you created? Examples might include salesman activity, shipment behavior, or other input uh, shortages. Look at your customer list. This is a good time to call troublesome customers, low margin customers, customers that don't fit the revised plan. Finally, we advise running scenarios to demonstrate the impact or of modest or significant swings to your revenue stream. Once you have developed the base case of your forecast, test key assumptions by creating interactive variables in these assumptions and then see how changing them will affect projected product delivery and service delivery, financial results, working capital requirements. Second, Stay close to your working capital, particularly cash. During any challenging time, cash is king and staying power is critical. Increase your turns on all of your work, your working capital assets and smartly slow your turns on current liabilities. We advise the following. In light of the revised sales forecast you created in your projections, what are your true inventory needs? If you now have obsolete inventory, can you quickly liquefy that? If so, do so. Review your receivables, particularly those outstanding over 60 days. Stay close, follow up, collect. Stretch out your payables prudently. Just as you're collecting your over 60 days, don't have your vendors coming after you to collect their over 60 days. You need them both to conduct your business and to prioritize you when it's required. Third, Talk to your third-party capital. During the threat of or actual shutdown, slowdown, capital becomes more risk adverse. No capital source likes a surprise, particularly so in challenging times. Some lenders will be very active in de-risking their balance sheets and will look for any excuse to call an outstanding loan or cancel a line of credit. Court your sources of liquidity during challenging times, particularly if you see a need for either working capital or to make an opportunistic acquisition. Keep your providers informed of changes in your business outlook, positive or negative. By doing so, they'll appreciate you as a capital partner and will be more willing to help if needed. Draw upon the forecast and the scenarios created earlier in the discussion to have those conversations with your capital providers. Finally, pay attention to P&L ratios, particularly gross margin and operating expenses divided by revenues. Margins are essential to the health of a business and to create value. Do you understand what goes into your gross margins and which 
product lines or service lines create your highest margins. Constantly look below the margin line at your expenses. The ratio of operating expenses to revenue should decline as revenue increases. As revenues decline, search high and low in your expense line to reduce costs to keep the ratio either in line or to continue improvement, but don't put your business at risk by cutting necessary expenses. When margins or ratios get out of a normal range, take action to provide them, to improve them. These four segments are the key areas we're advising our clients today. I'm David Horwitz with GHJ Advisors in Los Angeles. Please don't hesitate to reach out to discuss your individual situation in depth.